come to my winter herb garden. Let's come on in. You're probably wondering why would I do a video with uh, a dead garden, basically. It's actually not dead. It is dormant, so you need to be quiet. So I want to show you what grows here at this elevation. I'm at 4,500 feet about, and it's a high desert. So let's just see what survived this winter. We had at times like 20 degrees overnight for a few days, and most of my plants were fine, but let's go and check it. So here we have, we have a dandelion, hard to kill dandelion, and that's growing really nicely. I can even, uh, pick it in the winter time and just throw it into my salad as you know it's so highly nutritious here's my lemon balm that's starting to grow already and what I do even though I have this urge in the fall to cut these off to make my garden look pretty I don't because this gives a nice mulch a nice protection and um, you know during the cold winters and also the birds and the bugs love it because it uh, has some seeds here and they can live on that. So it's kind of uh, for all the little cre uh, critters that um, need to be supported in the winter time. So this one is lemon balm. And as you can see, it's starting to sprout or started to grow. And in about a month or so, I will cut the dead branches off and then a new growth can come up. And here we have comfrey. As you can see, the same thing. I just let everything die off and uh, give it a protection, protect those roots when it's 20 degrees. And as you can see, it's starting to grow already. The next one I have is echinacea. Now with echinacea, as you probably know, uh, in order for you to harvest the roots in the winter time or in the fall, you have to leave it at least five years in the ground. So this is about 10 years old and I leave these not just as a protection and food for uh, birds and bugs, but also to tell me where the echinacea is. So if I need to make a medicine, an extract or whatever I decide to do, I will know where to find the roots because when you start digging there's all kinds of roots from the trees from the lemon balm and so that way i know this is echinacea so let's go and see the cowslip the cowslip is like here and it's a primula and it's actually i believe it's endangered or at least you're not allowed to pick it any longer in europe and so i got this plant from canada from richter's in Canada and uh, so it's been in the ground for about five years or so and it's the first one to pop up and put out those beautiful yellow flowers and I just like to enjoy it I don't pick or do anything with it except I just enjoy its beauty in the spring so next to it we have more echinacea as you can see I just let it go wild and as a mulch and here is the nettles nettle leaf and that is is starting to sprout i don't know if the camera can pick it up but it's right here it's starting to sprout so this is a really good herb to pick in the springtime and uh, you know cook with it i have a few recipe i believe on the blog if you're interested here is another plant that I love growing. It's called motherwort. Motherwort is really good for anxiety, for hard, fast heartbeat. Uh, it's very soothing. It calms that trembling heart. And uh, this also, I'm going to be very soon cut off those dead branches. And this is actually Kinesha. And as you can see, it's starting to sprout so nicely. I could see also there's a lot of California poppies that are going to come up so I will have to tame that in some ways because they can really take over the garden and California poppies also very good for sleep. 
here we have the fever few the fever few this branch here i'm going to cut off very soon and as you can see all this new growth here is another comfrey which is the officinalis and that too is starting to sprout over here but i'm still this is a little bit more delicate because it doesn't like to grow in the southwest especially in the desert so i kind of baby it a little bit and leave this covered here's a navajo tea and that too is starting to sprout from the bottom up as you can see so this too i will cut pretty soon let's go see what else i have i spot with my little eye so here i have the thyme there's lemon thyme and over here i've got the middle eastern oregano and that's also called za'atar and it's uh, very delicious so i can pick that all winter long so here i have some onions that are popping up so that's going to be nice to just pick and put on top of your salad or in your soup here is winter savory and as you can see it's really coming up nicely now and that too is one that i can pick even though if it's dry in the winter time there's still an incredible flavor i miss this one is tarragon and this too is starting to grow nicely my gosh it still smells so beautiful but this is cilantro and that is really nice um, it really grows very well in my garden actually in the winter time the fall winter and spring it doesn't do very well in the summertime I guess it must be too hot but all winter long I can pick my fresh cilantro yum yum and here I have the same idea I've got the parsley I can pick that all winter long also and uh, you can see all this fresh growth and here uh, is a little wild plant that I'm going to leave here this is mullen Mullen is really good for respiratory issues, so I like to have that in my garden just in case somebody gets a cold or a, or a cough. This will grow tall, and uh, if you're not familiar with Mullen, I have a nice blog on Mullen if you want to read that. Let's go see what else we have. Here's my beautiful rosemary bush. It's been in the ground for quite many years, maybe 15 years, and I trim it and make a uh, smudge sticks, so as an incense. And uh, rosemary, I don't have to really do anything anymore. Uh, it's very important when you plant a rosemary never to let it dry out over a, even for one day. If it's dry one day, it will die. But after a year or two, you don't have to worry about it at all. It just keeps growing. And uh, it's a beautiful specimen. Right next to the rosemary, I guess they love each other, is the Mormon tea. Mormon tea is also very good for respiratory issues and asthma. And it's really hard to get. So I would suggest you grow your own and you don't really have to do anything except trim it and give it away to your friends. Okay, so we're outside the herb garden and here I have a lavender. I know it doesn't look like very much, but it is definitely alive. And I will trim it a little bit later on and it'll have beautiful flowers again. Next to it, I see that uh, um, the mugwort is starting to sprout. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, a little bit. So that will also grow in abundance. Here is a little leaf coming up.
Here's my chime. Uh -huh. And here is the sage, the white sage. People were wondering, how does the white sage do in the, in the high desert when it gets 20 degrees at night sometimes? And as you can see, this does very well. I have had this in here for maybe, I don't know, since 1994. And I like to pick on, you know, pick, pick it and dry it and use it as a smudge. It just smells so wonderful. And here I have another specimen down here. And it looks a little scraggly because the raccoons walk through it and kind of played with it and step on it. So I will take some of those broken uh, branches and then uh, dry it and have incense. Okay, uh, we're in another section in my garden. I'm just keeping my voice down. The dogs hear me and they want to put in their two cents also. But here I have the Jerusalem artichoke, which is kind of the sunflower family. And I like to grow it like this so it stays contained. And um, in the winter time, I can just go and uh, get some of its roots, as you can see right here, and just wash it well and cook it like a potato. It actually tastes a little bit like a potato, or you can eat it raw, just in your salads. All right, that's all I want to cover today. There's much, much more uh, that is going to be coming up in the garden. So as it comes up, I'll make a little, little video and show you what actually really, truly, honestly grows up here in the rim country at my elevation. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining me today. Ciao, Mitana! visitor here who is trying to help me to do some gardening. Eva, what are you doing with my pinko tree? <laughs>